Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here today to report on the Africa Endeavor Senior Leaders Communications Symposium. Africa Endeavor, as you know, is a part of a continuing series of engagements designed to strengthen the mutually beneficial networks between the United States and our African and European partners. These partner networks deter or decisively act against shared challenges threatening regional security, stability, and prosperity in Africa. As you saw today, we have representatives from 48 African nations and representatives from the African Union, the United Nations, and the European Union working together to build partnership capacity and to strengthen interoperability. In the long term, developing complementary capabilities are what symposiums such as Africa Endeavor are all about. And forums such as these promote an opportunity for our African partners to develop solutions to African challenges, as well as to address areas of mutual interest, such as promoting regional security and stability. I am especially honored to be sitting next to our co-host this year, Lieutenant General Aqua, uh, my, friend, my, my new friend, uh, and thank you very much, sir, for, your, for coming out today and your support for this conference. Ghana has proven to be a committed partner. Uh, as many of you know, this is the second time that Ghana has co-hosted Africa Endeavor. And this year is a key part, a key part of the symposium agenda will focus on Ghana's successes in communications infrastructure, policy, and workforce development. Again, I thank you all for being here today, and I look forward to answering your questions. Sir. As I realized that uh, the speeches were more cyber inclined, I don't know whether it's the general thing we're looking at. Uh, I mean, talking about Africa and Denver, whether we can go general or we just limit ourselves to the cyber threats. Well, I think I think it's a fair question. I think it's important to recognize that in the in the sphere of communications today, of course, you, it's difficult to separate traditional methods of communication from the cyber domain these days. And increasingly, all of our nations have to operate in, in, this, in the domain of, of cyber activity. Uh, and as I mentioned in my comments, it, it's an area that is ubiquitous to, to, the, to the globe. But it's also an area, of course, where traditional boundaries are increasingly less. Uh, significant because of the interoperability through the internet. So I, I think it's a very appropriate uh, topic for this this conference, in which, which is one of the reasons I think you see as increasing importance in this year's event. I'm asking that as a follow-up because we look at uh, threats in the Maghreb region creeping swiftly into our neighboring, our upper neighbors like Burkina Faso and stuff like that. And weekly we hear threats of all activities like. Uh, bombings and stuff like that, it seems to be keeping to our top. So I was just going to ask that what would be this be then, Africa and Denver, what benefit would it be or would we derive from such cooperation so that it will help with that? Yes. Well, thank you very much, my very good friend. Um, it is true uh, there's a threat that is developing in and around our country and in fact in West Africa and Africa in general. And one sure way of addressing this threat is to share intelligence. And intelligence must be shared within a secure environment. If your intelligence is not secure, then your planning will be faulty. Because then you'll be dealing with uh, an enemy who virtually knows what you are thinking about. So unimpeachable intelligence is critical. And that is one of the objectives of this meeting. Next question. It's going to be harnessed to, or it's going to be harnessed so that some of these in their inputs can be considered. Yeah, okay. It's a great question. I, you know, it's interesting, you know, if you look at the world's population, about 50% of the world's population are female. And so for the, for the military, to, to leverage the, 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 uh, the skills, the talents, the potential of women is critical to, to future security. And I'm proud that Ghana's taken such a leading role in that process. The Women's Peace and Security Symposium effort that occurred yesterday is a, is a prelude to that. Um, we're seeing growth. And so to your, your question, I mean, women bring immense talents to, to all these, these critical areas. And so I think this, this symposium this year and the companion peace, Women's Peace and Security Symposium aspects of it I think is a chance to leverage that, and we're, we're very pleased to see Ghana and the other countries of the region increasingly leverage the skills and the potential of, of, of women in the military domain to get after some of these problem sets. And I couldn't agree more with General Ockman you know, uh, these, these areas. Um, male, female, doesn't matter. These challenges are, are, are common to all of us, and frankly, we have to leverage it using the, the skills and potential of all, all of our service members. 
If I may just uh, add to what the general has said, um, it is very, very important that gender perspectives are factored into every decision-making process, not only in the military, but across the board. It is in consonance with the UN Security Council Resolution 1325, which enjoins us as military to ensure that in our planning, in our operations, in our management, and everything, that gender perspective is taken care of. So in this respect, yes, we have to factor them, and they have a critical role to play. Because within our uh, system, uh, we find female in the services, communication in particular, but other related logistic services, even though we are gradually bringing them on board within our combat units. Now, wherever they find themselves, they may be empowered. And having said this, let me thank the general in Africa for the opportunity to attend uh, a leadership program in Garmish in Germany, where the focus was empowering leadership, particularly at the junior leadership level. And it was a great meeting. We had a cross-session of military from across Africa, including women, and their contribution was deeply recognized. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. Question is, uh, as, you, as you heard, this is the 14th year of African endeavor. This is the second time that Ghana has hosted the conference. Um, Ghana graciously offered to host this year's conference. Uh, I think it's in, in one of the great efforts of hosting here in Ghana is, is you've, got a, you've got a military leadership that's very focused on these challenges of interoperability and communications, security of communications, security of cyber, uh, and you've just got a great location to be able to bring that, those, those aspects together in a single cohesive conference. We're very fortunate that many of our African partners have shared in hosting this conference over the years. Uh, we're especially pleased that Ghana has done it now twice, right. and Ghana continues to, to host other conferences of, of shared security cooperation, and I think it's reflective of the leadership role that Ghana is taking regionally uh, with some of these problem sets and these challenges. And uh, I know I speak for, for my leadership at the U.S. Africa Command. It's a great honor for us to be able to be here, and we appreciate the collaboration and the cooperation uh, that's gone into the planning of this year's event. And I just know that it's going to be very successful because of the commitment of the Ghanaian Armed Forces uh, as we move to this conference. So it's, a, it's an excellent venue for, for the conference. Well, I think the Waco said, said it best. I mean, when, when you have transnational threats uh, like terrorism, like, like violent extremist organizations, like piracy, um, those threats require regional approaches. They require regional sharing. They require, the, the, they require especially the sharing of intelligence across borders. Uh, these adversaries don't respect borders. Uh, these are not nation states. And so as a result, we have to be able to work as regional partners to try to get out to that, that problem set. And so this kind of conference and the kind of things that are being explored here this week in terms of sharing secure communication, interoperability, um, those kind of issues are critical to confronting those kind of threats which face the region uh, and increasingly face in this, in this part of the region. So, so this is an entirely uh, appropriate, and I think what's important, what I would highlight is this, is that while U.S. Africa Command, um, you know, this is, we want to assist in this effort, That's, that assistance is impossible without the, without the support and the participation of the leadership of the African partners themselves. And that's what you're seeing here at African Endeavor, and that's what you're seeing with Ghana and the other nations of the region as, as they address those very threats you talk about. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, sir, would you like to add something? I don't know. I think I, I just want to affirm what my colleague had just said and also to say that in scenarios of this nature, it takes a network to defeat a network. So a, like network, of, a network of like-minded personalities, militaries, governments, to be able to address the challenge that confronts us. So that is it. I and mean, it's the shortest way of achieving success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That's all I have time for. Thank you.